Hey there, welcome to SugarMD. Today I'm diving into something super important, especially for anyone facing kidney issues. So let's chat about medications and even supplements that can cause kidney toxicity. Well, understanding this is very important. Why? Because once your kidney is damaged, typically there's no coming back. When certain substances like medications, Certain supplements will decrease the kidney function permanently. Even kidney failure can happen, acute kidney failure in some cases, and in some cases it's a chronic damage, slow chronic damage. So let's break down some of the ways these uh, medications and supplements can really wreak havoc on your kidneys. So what is really nephrotoxicity, which is kidney toxicity, right? When a substance directly harms the kidney cells, which are called nephrons, as you know, one of the biggest toxin for your nephrons, for your kidneys, is high glucose. Well, that's not a drug, but it can directly damage your kidneys. We'll talk about drugs today, though, okay? So I'm just reminding you some facts. There are a lot of mechanisms for glucose, for example, to damage your kidneys. One of them is oxidative stress through free radical damage. And there is ischemia, which is a lack of, you know, or fancy way of saying kidneys are not getting enough blood flow. Certain medications can constrict those blood vessels, cutting off that crucial supply and causing major issues. Another big player in this nasty game is inflammation. Some medications will trigger an inflammatory response in the kidneys, leading to scarring and decreased function over time, sometimes almost immediate. Let's not forget about the crystal deposition. That's another form of drug side effect, crystalline structures that actually block the tubules in the kidneys making it hard for them to do their job. Can you believe that? It is really wild how so many different pathways can lead to kidney damage. It's important to be aware and have these conversations with your doctor so that you can make informed choices about what you are putting into your body. The most common medication actually that affects the kidneys and a lot of people are surprisingly unaware of this are the pain medications or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, right? I'm not talking about necessarily the opioids. These are non-opioid, non-steroidal drugs like ibuprofen, naproxen, stuff like that. So they can be really harsh on your kidneys if not used carefully. Even aspirin. I know, you know people are using baby aspirin sometimes, but they're not as innocent as you may think. So ibuprofen, like I said, naproxen, they damage your kidneys at higher doses by reducing the blood supply in your kidneys. Another one is actually acetaminophen, like simple Tylenol, right? You have to be really cautious with, with Tylenol as well, especially in cases of overdose or pre-existing liver conditions. Now, I said non-opioid, non-steroidal are a problem, those drugs, but opioids are also a problem, right? And we know, everybody knows, there's a huge opioid addiction in our country, in the U.S. So it is still a huge risk. The reason is they cause dehydration. They cause constipation. These are the most common side effects. You know, it may not seem like a big deal, especially when combined with not drinking enough water and constipation leads to decreased flow to your kidneys. The longer the kidneys are under strain from this dehydration, the more the damage will occur. Again, they are great for pain management if used correctly, but it is super important to use them wisely and stay hydrated too, and prevent constipation at all costs if you can. Always keep the line of communication with your healthcare providers. People ignore it, they don't wanna to talk to the doctor, or doctor is busy, they ignore themselves, and then next thing you know, they get into much bigger complications. That's why a lot of people, for example, with Ozempic type of drugs, they end up with major problems. They end up in the hospital. Sometimes they even have bowel perforations type of, you know, or bowel obstructions. And the reason for that is they just ignore the side effects of the medication just because they like the fact that they're losing weight or it's helping their diabetes. But, you know, you don't want to really die from a medication by ignoring the side effects. Another common, very common drug that are even sold as over-the-counter, which I don't think they should be sold over-the-counter, but they are, like Prilosec or Nexium, uh, Prevacid, right? These are anti-acid drugs. They can increase the kidney risk in the long term. Now, antibiotics and kidneys are also important. So because like people are taking antibiotics like candies nowadays, it is super important. Why? Because they, some of them carry really big risks, like aminoglycosides, for, for example, as a group of antibiotics, includes the gentamicin, neomycin, amikacin, they're pretty potent, prolonged use can be harmful to your kidneys. 
Now, some people have to use these medications for a long time because of some deep-seated infections or chronic infections. Vancomycin is another medicine used, especially in the hospitals, very commonly. Especially if they combine it with uh, piperacil and tazobactam, these will increase your kidney stress a lot. That's why we see a lot of people in ICU on these drugs and their kidneys are failing. We don't know if it is the sepsis itself or the drugs that are causing it. Sometimes it is hard to tell. Solistin, polymyxins are also, there are red flags. There are some antifungals, chemotherapy drugs, so you name it. So let's talk about the antifungals then, right? So chemotherapeutic agents are also, they're, they're important. You know, you have to some, you use them. And if you have a fungal infection, you have to use antifungal. But for example, amphotericin B, sidofovir, tenofovir, adofovir, these are need to be adjusted significantly if your kidney function is low as well. Chemotherapy agents like cisplatin or ifophosphine, like they must be handled with caution. They require significant adjustments. Another one that you will be familiar with is diuretics, right? So they're often referred to as basically water pills. And people use it like, Okay, I have some leg swelling, give me some water pills. Well, that sounds benign and very innocent, but they can actually cause dehydration slowly as well, which is going to be harmful for your kidneys. Sometimes you have to use them for high blood pressure or real volume retention from heart failure or kidney failure, but it has to be really carefully managed by your doctor uh, to prevent dehydration. So you need to be aware that they, yes, they reduce the volume, but sometimes they do too much and it can be a problem. Chemotherapy and contrast agents, right? So people go, they ask for CAT scans, hey, do, do imaging for this, imaging for that, and some of the imaging required CAT scan, I mean, the IV dye, etc. Not good for your kidneys. Even for MRI, right? So if you're getting a lot of MRI contrast, uh, gadolinium, that can accumulate, especially if you have severe kidney disease, it's not even recommended to get an MRI to begin with. How about supplements, right? Well, supplements are generally good, and they actually, some of them help your kidneys but some of them can be harmful. So it's better to know, right? Before it's too late. There are some weird supplements out there that you should be clear of, you know, that's for sure. Now, some out there, some gems that are really great for your kidneys, especially if you are dealing with diabetes, there's so much stress on your kidneys on a daily basis, you may have to use some supplements, but some of them can be harmful. Now, let's talk about probiotics as a good one, right? I'm gonna talk about First, like what is good for your kidneys, and we'll talk about what is bad for your kidneys when it comes to supplements. Probiotics are great. They strengthen your gut health. Happier gut means happier kidneys. Probiotics really help maintain a balance of good bacteria that can reduce the inflammation, which is great for your overall health because you do not want inflammation in your body that ends up in your kidneys. Alpha-lipoic acid is a powerful antioxidant that helps fight oxidative stress, which is super common with people with insulin resistance or diabetes. So people really underestimate the power of these supplements, but they are, to me, should be like a baseline supplement for almost every diabetic. alpha lipoic acid can even improve your insulin sensitivity beside being protective. And let's not forget about the benfotiamine, which is a B1 vitamin that really shines with diabetes and kidney issues. Like you know probably, benfotiamine has been shown in studies, in multiple studies, that it reduces the nerve damage and kidney injury. So by supporting the metabolism of glucose, that benfotiamine will really reduce the strain on your kidneys because when you utilize the glucose correctly, you are going to avoid the alternate pathways like sorbitol pathway or hexosamine pathway, polyol pathway. These are all pathways that your body creates substances that becomes forever chemicals almost in your body and accumulates in your body and you cannot do anything about them. It just They just keep creating inflammation. Unless you have strong antioxidants, and benfotiamine in this case, prevents from their production to begin with. So which supplements then to avoid, right? Well, generally, like I said, most supplements are not heavy doses. They are easily handled by your body, but some people kind of go overboard or they overdo. They go over the recommended amount or simply they shouldn't be taking because of degree of kidney function they have, the dysfunction they have. Some of these supplements, even if they're natural, still needs to be processed by your kidneys. So I'm gonna tell you common ones, take note of these. Uh, one of them is called astragalus, an herb that is used for immune boosting properties, but sometimes it can mess with your kidneys, especially if you're not careful. Celery is interestingly, uh, is in the list here. 
It has a lot of benefits. If you overdo it, I know it's a great snack, but it may not be great for your health. Horsetail. Well, that's very familiar to me too because I actually grow them <laughs> uh, right in front of my house. Why? Well, because they look good. They're nice. They're like a little bamboos. They're like a thinner bamboos and uh, they, are, they are really cute. It is trendy. It's, it works like a diuretic. I never tried it myself, but uh, that's what it's known for. At the same time, it can lead to dehydration um, <laughs> if, you, if your kidneys are not great to begin with. Licorice root. That is something. Love it. I hate it personally, but it's tasty. Uh, it's some people like eat it every day, but it can really cause a lot of imbalance and stress for your kidneys. Parsley root. So again, this is a diuretic. You can eat parsley, no problem. But if you are kind of drinking parsley root tea all the time and stuff like that, you know, your kidneys may not like that too much. Another one is uva ursi, which has been used for, again, urinary issues, but it can be hard on your kidneys on high doses. Creatine. That's super popular, right? Athletes or bodybuilders use a supplement to increase the muscle mass. But guess what? All of those byproducts end up in your kidneys. And if you have kidney issues, you don't want to really overwork your kidneys with too much of these supplements. There's another one called Hyperzine A that is uh, for memory support. Again, it can cause problems in susceptible in individuals. Now, there's something called nettle cyst thing. That's an interesting name, right? They have great benefits, but again, be cautious with the kidneys. Pennyroyal is another one. You probably heard of that one. It's, it has a huge history of medicinal use. But uh, again, if overused, could be a problem. Yahimbe is another one that is primarily for used for aphrodisiac properties. But again, you know, you don't want to overdo that for a little fun, then your kidneys can pay for it, right? Cat's claw is uh, great for inflammation, but uh, might not be safe if you have kidney issues. Goldenrod is again good for urinary health in general, but again, too much of it can be a problem. Java tea leaf has diuretic properties. Again, that's similar to any other diuretic. Could be a problem if used too much. Oregon grape. This is directly interfering with kidney function, so that definitely should be avoided. So I think I covered most of these. If I missed anything, just let me know. And if you found this episode helpful, you know, please subscribe, right? share it with others, and it might be beneficial. Please follow our community guidelines when commenting. We are all nice people. We want to be nice to each other. And check out SugarMD Kidney Support at um, SugarMDs.com. And we have a lot of resources. Uh, we have books, we have uh, blogs, uh, we have audiobooks, uh, you name it. We have all sorts of resources. You can subscribe and get all the benefits. So you can just go to our website, put your email down. That way, you know, we know you're part of the family. Talk to you later. Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching. And this year, we are announcing for 2025 January start a diabetes reversal program and we need your input so go to diabetesreversalformula.com and sign up be a thought leader give us your recommendations how to create this program so we can beat diabetes together see you later